I'm with the State Geological Survey, and this is looking at uh, eight state impact from a catastrophic event, which was a 7.7 a .7 magnitude event on the New Madrid Faults. The eight state geological surveys got together to produce maps on how the soils will amplify the ground motions. We have the ground motions running through the bedrock are the smallest in the area. When they come up through the soil, they become amplified by different soils, some more than others, and we produce the maps to point that out. Uh, so we've kind of produced the base maps for this uh, compilation of the impacts uh, and other folks with the Mid-America Earthquake Center and Virginia Tech looked at the social infrastructure and buildings impact on, on the ground surface. The 7.7 uh, .7 magnitude event uh, was picked in uh, working with the state U.S. Geological Survey and the state geological surveys. We picked that as one we could use in multiple exercises so we're not using different, different uh, magnitudes for different states, etc. Uh, it is a, considered a, would be a catastrophic national impact. Uh, the estimated direct economic losses in dollar amounts would be $300 billion. And then there's indirect economic costs, which would be a couple of times that is estimated from, from this work. Uh, and also you can think about that we have a lot of infrastructure that runs through this area, but you know, not only railroads, interstates, but pipelines that feed a lot of petrochemicals to the northeast part of the, of the, of the United States. Uh, not just nat natural gas, a little bit more local, we can get around some of those problems, uh, but a major impact in the center of the United States would have national repercussions, especially with a dollar amount that much. Uh, seven point, it's estimated 7.2 million people would be displaced, that would, and 2 million of them would be, be needing some sheltering. Uh, that's a huge population, but it's also spread out over a very large area. Yeah, this is more of a, almost, almost a worst case scenario. And the information has been broken down by count by county. So many folks here are from a county level, uh, can work on their own exercises, and with that could get get a heads up as to what problems they would have to address in a, in a, a large event. But also, this prepares people for smaller events. So if you have a smaller event near your community, it could have as just as big a repercussion as a larger one farther farther away. So this kind of gives people, uh, shows them where their weak areas are that they, need to, that they need to handle during an event, in either a large event farther away or a small event that's, that's nearby. Uh, so the preparation is for multiple levels of, of earthquake events. The central United States, the, the earthquake ground motions in the center of the United States travel a great distance, uh, 15, 20 times farther than what happens in California. So if you look at a California event and say, oh, this is what's going to happen in, this, in this eastern or central United States, that's not the case. So you know, just as this small 5.4 magnitude event last April in 2008 occurred, that was felt in 28 states in Canada. Uh, nothing like that. You know, there's only, we had one two months after that in California was a 5.4. It was only felt in about four states. Uh, so the aerial impact is much larger. So, so people will feel it th throughout the area. And if it's large enough to impact a lot of our infrastructure, then it also impacts people from far, far, farther away.